now remember this particular thing it's it's it's, it's not our goal over there that's plain and simple that's the first thing second thing is what is our main uh methodology our methodology is basically practical skills so whenever we are basically saying okay we will follow arriva upstream we will follow arriva downstream over there we are going to work in the system there we will basically be discussing the scenarios what we are seeing in the project what kind of issues will come what kind of requirement will come and how you are going to face the solution or basically how you are going to see the requirement how you are going to design a solution for that and then basically the other thing like you know testing configuration all those particular thing so configuration and testing by default will fall in the you know process as well as the configuration so each and everything is linked so in our session session 1 is having a linkage not only with session 2 but session 3 but session 4 and session 5 also why same thing it is present in the project so whatever we do in the project that is what we are going to do of course we are not going to do the project in our sessions why because a project if you look at ariba project with a full upstream and downstream part fully part so it will be more than one year exactly but what kind of requirement generally comes from the client how to deal with it these are the things which we are going to do so that is why we don't follow a normal methodology so that is why you have to be attentive exactly second thing why I, then all of you are going to ask me then manoj why you basically opened up a ppt you said to us that you don't like ppt correct ppt is for theoretical things and i will say exactly that is the point that is the point over there so i am basically showing you the ppt right now why because you look at this particular definition you look at the definition of what is upstream what is downstream because that is the major thing of ariba downstream operational procurement deals with meeting of the daily you know daily purchasing needs of the organization blah 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 all of you will say manoj yes it's some heavy technical word but we are not getting any idea that is theoretical knowledge if you, all of you read what is the meaning of upstream what is the meaning of downstream over here you won't get a single idea but what you can do is you can ask me manoj from your experience you tell us what is ariba upstream solution what is ariba downstream solution from the project perspective use practical scenarios then i will say yeah that's a good one so then what i will do just give me a moment over here just a moment let's use a notepad exactly let's see how much the skill the trainer is having without a ppt exactly now let me just uh increase the font so that i think all of you are able to see it properly a little bit big i think so right now i think all of you are able to see uh, sap ariba which i have written in the notepad correctly can you confirm guys you can confirm me through the help of chat box over there the chat box you can find it in the go to training app over there at the end there you can basically type in and click on send so i would be able to see your uh, responses exactly so this is the default way of communication between you and me when we are basically showing the content once the content is finished don't think we are going to skirt any question we are going to take question from all of you guys and this is not only for today's session every session yeah yeah thanks for your confirmation guys okay so let us start enough of this chit chat and all those particular thing let's go into the you know main what you can say uh main theme of our session exactly so sap ariva what is sap ariva in a very simple language what is sap ariva solution why because a lot of people will say manoj sap ariva is a on cloud solution 
uh, it's basically uh, some of you know some of the participant you know participant even will say it's a replacement for mm but what is it actually the answer is pretty simple it's a procurement solution based on cloud services what does it means so it means you can do the procurement over there within this particular software but this software is based on cloud services now all of you are going to say okay if you compare ariba with mm and srm in sap they are also we can do the procurement those are on premise solution that means client will install mm and srm in their own server but for ariba you cannot do that <coughs> excuse me yes before 2010 yeah it was possible but from 2010 onwards ariba is on cloud solution yeah before 2010 it was a on premise solution now before i go into the solutioning part and make all of you understand what is upstream what is downstream a small small thing which i want to basically clarify most of you who are basically coming from the procurement background either mm and srm and you want to learn ariba a small basically info information which i want to provide because i also did the same thing and my first project was a disaster yeah in 2011 i i started working on that and it was a disaster why because i thought what was mm what was srm same thing was ariba the way of doing the configuration the way the process is basically designed the architecture everything is same so that is why it was a very big issue why because most of you when you are looking at ariba you are thinking it's a sap company sap ariba and i will say exactly correct but <coughs> excuse me guys when ariba launched this on cloud solution in 2010 when sap buyed out ariba in september 2012 that means it was developed in 2009 2008 it was launched in 2010 that means it was not a in house development product of sap or sap labs did not work on that particular thing so its architecture language configuration everything is different from mm and srm exactly so please don't think you know it's just just like a, you know difference between what you can say a wine and a vodka same thing like that so they are you know a very different category over there so all of you should be very very clear on that part yeah hsp's brand is it but, but please don't think like it's it's it, it's the same thing it's different yes from a functional perspective from a business perspective it is same exactly so please keep this thing in your mind exactly now why i am saying this thing because you should keep your mind open please don't think that you will have a spro over there through which you can do the configuration you won't have the document uh type over here to do that configuration here it will be different transaction type configuration in mms or whatever you have done here it does not exist exactly it will be different so the architecture also you have to understand why because if you don't understand architecture just like when you're in a constructing a building if your base is wrong no much you know how much you give extra hard effort in you know constructing the building it will always fail exactly now just a moment uh so guys if you are all able to hear me okay can please confirm how you can confirm you can look and you know you know in the go to training app at the end there is a small chat box you can basically type in that yes and click on send i would be able to see your comments yeah and as for those guys who are basically joining over there okay 
newly over there yeah just just a moment just a moment just a moment i think some of you who have basically recently joined is having some issue yeah give me a moment give me a moment yeah yeah thank you guys now so basically that is what i'm seeing over here okay now i think all of you are able to hear me okay <coughs> excuse me yeah there are certain things which all of you should be very very clear on one part and there are certain things which all of you should be basically knowing over there and what is that particular thing that is please don't think that uh, from a configuration perspective or from a uh, what you can say uh, from a architecture point of view what you have learned in sap will apply in ariba fully that's it nothing else nothing more nothing less now let us go into upstream and downstream now uh ariba always use a new uh, what you can say uh, uh new terminology over there you know old wine in a new bottle okay so these are basically sometimes referred to as strategic sourcing solution but i generally don't like to use this particular terminology why because this particular thing will give a picture in your mind you know some of the you know participant can basically misunderstand saying the strategic sourcing is upstream that means apart from sourcing there is nothing else actually that is not the issue okay but still i will prefer to use the term upstream it's much better similarly downstream this is also called as something around buying and invoicing lot of uh, you know participant tell me manoj why you are not talking about uh uh basically the buying and invoicing manoj why is it like that ha huh. why is it like that so i will tell to all of you guys so it's a new terminology which sap is using but from from my project perspective from my training perspective i will use the term upstream and downstream because it has some uh what you can say a uh, very ease of understanding exactly now the first thing first is like before you run into over here all of you will be interested in and you know trying to understand what you mean by upstream what you mean by downstream exactly what is upstream what is downstream so before you come up over here and jump into this thing and say manoj from a project perspective we explain us what is upstream and what is downstream then i will say whenever you will go to any project your client or the you know customer over there will ask you about two things old products and new products and this is not something uh, different guys it's not for some you know you cannot basically say to me acha manoj this is for sap ariba or for something else no this is common this is common for what you can say upstream uh, sorry for any procurement solution you go to any client over there you ask them what is the basics of procurement they will say whenever we are procuring old product and whenever we are procuring new product these are the two major categorization now within this you can have different different type of categorization some of you can say direct indirect some of you will basically say material and services some of you will basically say different account assignment different delivered to address whatever may be the thing but majorly for every client the procurement of old product and procurement of new product these are the two main categorization exactly why because there is a huge difference in the process when i say old product okay now what do you mean by old product over there 
old product means all of you will basically say oh, no, i think this particular product which we have already procured from some supplier before and i will say exactly correct but on a functional side that you have basically defined from business side what about from a functional side what's the definition you can say from functional side bonus we know which supplier is going to basically deliver me that particular product at what price yes there are other factors also but these are the two main thing then i will say exactly correct or in other words you know the source of supply products procured before and source of supply is known okay this is basically the main characteristics of old product okay now what about new product now all of you will basically say what is the meaning of new product the new product is basically simple guys you have never buy that product before okay that means all of you will say one of the products which we have not procured before and we also don't know the source of supply and i will say exactly correct why because it is never present in the system because it has not been procured before and source of supply is unknown okay now in actuality in ariba guys there is nothing called as old product and new product okay the actual terminology over here is catalog items now if i have used this terminology all of you have panicked mean means like i also has on one time when i was learning ariba in 2011 2012 that that time i also used to get panicked because of this terminology why because i was not having any idea that why there is so much you know tough tough technical things why not simply use your knowledge if your understanding is good make me understand so that is what we have basically made you understood so old product means catalog item catalog item means what which is already present in the system and in ariba catalogs if you say you are having some item that is by default is called as catalog item its source of supply must be known but on the other hand non catalog item non catalog item means what it does not exist you will basically add a free text item so it does not exist in the system similarly if you are going to add a free text description source of supply is not known exactly that is what you are going to define over there as catalog item versus non catalog item okay now manoj <coughs> excuse me you took the basically pain to make us understand this catalog item non catalog item very good but what it has to do with upstream and downstream very good thing upstream mainly mainly i am not saying guys all the time mainly i am saying mainly used for what so all of you will say upstream is mainly used for non catalog item okay what does it means manoj in a very simple way the answer is pretty simple answer is not so tough mainly you will say acha manoj that means if you have not buy the uh, product before so we are not going to go directly into downstream we are going to go into the upstream why to determine the best source of supply correct that means if you are going to buy a non catalog item first you are going to determine who is the best supplier what is the best price over there otherwise you know it will become a fish market correct anybody will come and they will say acha i am having my uncle over there i am having my auntie over there 
they are basically selling the product okay high price we will include them as a supplier they will deliver them and my uncle and aunt will give me a commission like this it will happen exactly but if you are going to basically go into the upstream streamline the process multiple suppliers is going to come they are going to give the bid then you are going to basically uh, select the best supplier then do the contracting then use the contract compliance then what will happen everything is captured in the system now nobody can go to the aunt or uncle over there for the product part over there exactly until unless they are giving a good quotation exactly what about the downstream downstream are mainly used for catalog item basically based on what to order the product take deliveries and pay to the supplier then all of you will say acha manoj in that case so you are saying in downstream it is basically beginning from ordering process then i will say exactly correct the beginning from the ordering only now in order purchase order what are the you know mandatory field uh, you know it's it's not like from a river perspective from a general perspective all of you will say yes there are a lot of fields manoj which are mandatory over there in purchase order but supplier name what is the exact price what is the line item that means the product which you are ordering what is the quantity yes other things are there unit of measurement you know commodity code all those things but these three are the main things supplier should be there product should be there and the quantity should be there exactly and the price should be there that means source of supply must be known that means what for downstream to basically start in a very plain and simple way you can basically tell over here excuse me source of supply must be known source of supply must be known to begin the process okay that is basically the one of the major uh what you can say characteristics of downstream on the other hand look at upstream source of supply will be known at the end of the process that means like you know you will know it and then almost almost means at the end of the process okay or you know, yeah when we are going to basically go into further into the upstream all of you are going to say manoj i think you should basically say almost at the middle or 40% of the process or 50% of the process we are going to find out the base source of supply yes but technically for today's session i will say to understand the difference you can say in upstream we are going to basically ascertain the best source of supply for non catalog item downstream is basically used for catalog item where the source of supply must be known then only we can begin the process otherwise we cannot order and if we cannot do the you know if we cannot send the po to the supplier how supplier will basically send us the you know product how we can do the gr over there how we can basically ask the supplier to send us the invoice and how the payment will be done so that's the major difference between upstream and downstream in a very simple way this is how you should learn ariva because this is the same thing which your client will ask you to be you know you will be implementing in the project yeah you don't need to go to any sap book over there you don't need to read any other book nor you have to watch any slide this is what you will be doing it in the project exactly now all of you will say okay manoj very good but i think this solutions of ariva 
will be further subdivided into modules and i will say exactly correct so what are the different different modules of upstream and downstream then i will say exactly correct but before we go running towards this particular thing most of you who are coming from the sap background you are having a very good idea about a little bit of application point of view and database point of view i am not saying about technical characteristics but from a uh, database point of view all of you will know that in erp when we will basically install we will use for s4 hana we will use hana system as the database in ecc it was like oracle and other things or other things will you know we use, generally used to use for the database but all of you will say at the end manoj it was one database but the fact is like how many databases is existing for the ariba solutions frankly speaking frankly speaking i will give the answer but i have never seen it why because you have to remember this is a on cloud solution that means ariba will not let you pick what is happening or basically uh, see what is happening in the server why because the server belongs to sap ariba itself yeah please keep this thing in your mind it's it's a very important thing for all of you guys to remember now all of you will say very good <coughs> excuse me guys very good manoj then i will say exactly that is the major thing over here now let us move into the database part few of my friends are working as a you know senior managers in sap ariva development team they have only told me that in ariva you don't have a single database two databases is present and you will understand why because when we are discussing the sub modules part over there you will understand that why it is having two separate database because some of the processes lot of participant don't know why they are using that particular thing contract compliance for example supplier qualification for example why we are doing this thing just for the sake of doing it you ask any trainer and they will say yes yeah, just for the sake of doing it only we are doing it no that is never the reason so always remember in case of ariva ariva is having two database one database is for what for the upstream and second database is for basically the downstream yeah please keep this thing in your mind and you will see in the further explanation that why database concept is coming over there because it will come yeah you don't need to go into the technical level but from a functional perspective you should understand then only you will understand what is the meaning of contract compliance what is the meaning of supply qualification otherwise you will say it's crap actually it is not crap it's important part so that is why at the beginning only i was telling to all of you guys architecture ariva architecture is very very different from erp architecture or sap architecture exactly because it was not developed by sap people it was developed by ariva keep this thing in your mind okay so what is the first thing supplier onboarding or slp okay through this particular thing what we will do of course all of you will basically say onboard supplier in ariva very good i will say very good but there are certain things which all of you should know it's not a one step process like in srm and in uh, erp it was just a one step process registration of supplier done but here it is not like that why because in srm erp or any other solutions if you look at it both the buyer and the supplier will log in into the same url what's the difference the role nothing else but you look at ari wari you understand this is a huge security risk tomorrow some basis guys or security guy give a wrong role to the supplier and include some buyer role what will happen that supplier will see what is happening from the buyer point of view certain things which should not be shown to the supplier the supplier would be able to see it so how to resolve this risk ariba came up with two solution so that is why throughout our whole uh sessions you will see two things is coming ab and an what is this ab 
EB is basically Ariba buyer. And this one is basically the Ariba network. Okay. Exactly. So Ariba buyer is basically the URL which will be logged in by Ariba over there. Uh, sorry, the buyer over there. Ariba network is the specific URL application which will be logged in by the supplier over there. Exactly. Here, <laughs> supplier cannot log in into Ariba buyer. Exactly. Please keep this thing in your mind. So that kind of security risk won't be there. Okay. Yeah. So let us try to understand some more point over here. So onboard supply in Ariba over there. So onboarding a supplier in Ariba means in Ariba buyer also you have to onboard and you have to ask the supplier that boss you register in Ariba network also. So that is why there are three steps. Supplier request. So what we will do in supply request. So in supply request, we will basically gather some basic data. About the supplier. Very good. And begin the onboarding process. in AB. AB means Ariba buyer. Clear? Exactly. But remember, you cannot use the supplier. Why? Because you've just uploaded the supplier in Ariba buyer. Supply has not created their account in Ariba network. So until unless they create their account in Ariba network, they cannot receive any transactional document over there. So okay, Manoj, when we will do that? In supplier registration. In supplier registration, we will ask the supplier to register in Ariba network. So in this particular process, what will happen is a process, supply will register by creating their user ID password. If they don't have a user ID password in Ariba network, some of the supplier already have a user ID password. So they cannot basically create the same user ID password once more. Same email, same username cannot be used more than once. So what will happen? They have to log in with the pre-existing user ID password in Ariba network and a ID, unique ANID will be generated. That ANID will be synced back to the Ariba buyer. Through this ANID, what will happen? Every supplier is identified in Ariba. Ariba means both Ariba buyer as well as Ariba network. So that is why all, all of you should remember Ariba network is a very, very, uh, what you can say, important terminology. You will see in our upcoming sessions. Very, very important. Okay, very, very good. So Manoj, why we will do the qualification? Why? Because right now we can use this Ariba buyer for doing what? Basically, we will use this supplier to send sourcing, contracting, all those particular things. So what's the issue, Manoj? The issue over here is, guys, in supplier qualification, you will see there are different, different things. What are those different, different things? That is, you are going to use a supplier to qualify them against a particular commodity code and region. Is it mandatory? Of course, all of you will say, even the client will say no. Depending on the business process, it can be mandatory, it cannot be. So then why we will do it? So you should all remember this particular thing. What is happening? The supplier are getting created in your upstream part. Why? Because upstream is having a different database than downstream. So what will happen is like, Oh, this particular supplier has won the sourcing project. Okay, very good. I have signed the contract. Next, I want to basically create a PR or PO against that particular contract. I will get an error in downstream saying, hey, where's the supplier? One of there is no supplier available in downstream like this. Then I will say, what? Why? 
because the database is different exactly so what we will do in supplier qualification officially officially Ariba will say you will basically do it by qualifying <coughs> excuse me qualifying a supplier against what commodity code plus region very good but in actuality you are replicating the supplier from upstream to downstream i think you know it went out over there yeah exactly so from upstream to downstream over there but remember this is not happening in the foreground it is happening in the background there is a standard task which is basically by default scheduled we don't have to schedule it once you do the qualification automatically the supplier will be replicated from the upstream to downstream why because upstream is having a particular database downstream is having a particular different database now basically this contract when you will move to downstream it will not give an error second thing is like you can also consume that contract that means like against that contract you can do a pr or po and you can basically order it exactly using the contract it will not throw up an error most of the Ariba consultant they don't know this particular thing you ask them what is qualification hey qualification is a fancy thing but actually qualification is a very very important thing which all of you should be knowing very very well now <coughs> excuse me now all of you should basically understand guys generally in our session one year ago we used to have our process basically we will always begin our session with upstream and we will begin with the slp but one year before what used to happen over there is like Ariba has changed this particular process. Which process Ariba has basically changed? The upstream part. Now, SLP is rather than just an onboarding process for supplier over there, Ariba has totally changed the landscape and the integration process over there. Ariba is saying, boss, if the supplier is not properly integrated between your ERP solution and that of Ariba solution, what will happen is like whenever you will do a transactional data integration, you're creating the PO in ERP and you're moving the PO in Ariba. What will happen? It will throw up an error. So right now, for the last one year, what Ariba has done is like, Ariba has changed this integration, especially the master data integration in such a way that SLP is no more a onboarding tool. It is majorly a master data integration process. So when we will go to our session, you will see we will cover this SLP part in our integration session. Why? Because if the supplier data is not synced properly between ERP and Ariva, your whole transactional data integration, whether you're talking about upstream or downstream, it will fail gloriously. Exactly. So that is why this SLP part basically we are going to do in our integration session, not in the first only. Why? And Especially, I don't want to begin the session, first session with integration, and you will know why. At the end of today's session, you will understand that why I should not basically begin with the integration. Because most of you are thinking it in a very different way, and I will tell you what happens in a project. But before that, let us come to the next sub-module of upstream. <coughs> Excuse me. Sourcing. What is sourcing? All of you will say, uh, sourcing is managed to find the best source of supplier. And I will say exactly correct. Okay, what are the different different sourcing process? RFI. RFP and auction. Here, lot of people generally ask me, lot of consultant, lot of participants generally ask me, Manoj, how we will go ahead with sourcing? Project implementation. RFI stands for request for information, 
RFP basically means request for proposal. RFI means what? You will ask for technical information, no price information. RFP means you will ask for price and quality related information. Exactly. So how we will do this process? So there I will say in a very simple way. Suppose, forget about the organization. You want to buy one smartphone and one laptop. Now imagine or assume you don't know anything about laptop. That is contrary to all of us. Why? Because we are all of us are basically working in the IT industry. Of course, SAP functional is actually not a basically what you can say IT part rather than being IT part. I will suggest it's basically part of the business analyst role. Exactly. Management and a kind of technical or functional analyst role kind of thing. But then again, that's a different kind of uh, argument that we can basically keep it for different sessions. But as of now, remember, you don't know anything about laptop, you know everything about smartphone. So when you will go to buy a smartphone from a different shop, what will happen? If the salesperson basically comes to you or the sales representative comes to you, you will say, boss, I don't need any lecture. Okay. I think the Samsung Galaxy H20 Plus is much better compared to the one plus so how much price you're giving to me okay any extra discount okay okay what is the one plus price right now okay i think samsung galaxy s20 is much much costly than you know one plus 80 over there so okay i will buy the one plus 80. why because i am already knowing about smartphone I know about this brand, OnePlus and you know Samsung. I know about their model. I know about their specification. Everything I know about it. I just wanted to know what was the offering, price offering, which the particular shop owner is going to give, or basically ask for that particular product. So that is basically an example of RFP. Now, for laptop, I don't know anything about it. Can I go over there and I will say, hey? Give me the Dell laptop. Why? Because I don't know anything about laptop. So I will basically ask, Acha bhaiya, so this is the laptop over there. Very good. So you are showing me Dell, HP, Asus, and Lenovo. Very good. So you tell me, what's the difference? Because in Asus, you know, uh, uh, Asus or HP also, you're showing me different, different models. What's the difference? Why? Because some of the prices are basically starting from $1,000. It is basically going to $3,000 also. What's the difference? But I'm going to get a, you know what, uh, ride in Mercedes if I buy that $3,000 laptop? Of course not. So what's the difference? You explain me the thing. So then they will say, okay, the, the CPU, the graphics card, the display, <coughs> excuse me, the, craftsmanship of this whole laptop and all those particular things, all these things that sales representative is going to make me understand. Then they will say, okay, these models of different, different HP models also, one is for the low end. That means you don't want to spend much money, but you want to get some extra thing, you know, kick out of that particular laptop. You are going to buy it. Mid sector, mid section. So here, you know, the price won't be very high, but it won't be very low also, but the work will be great and high end here. You want a full workhorse laptop, which can, you know, where you're going to do hard work on that particular laptop. So you're going to spend huge money for that particular thing. Achha, 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 achha. Then I will say, I think the mid section is more than enough. Why? Because I am going to work on that particular laptop in my office and occasionally I'm going to use it for personal things like, you know, browsing or basically FB, yeah, <laughs> all those particular thing, exactly. Or for watching sometimes small phone movies over there or watching YouTube, that's the thing. So in that case, the technical information and all those things they are basically giving, where it will come? It will come at a RFI level. Now, once I understand everything about the particular different, different model of the product, what, what is the next thing which I will do? Now, basically I will ask, Acha bhaiya, What's the price? When I will know the price over there, then I will say, okay, this one I choose. 
so that's the two different section known product unknown product once again okay keep this thing in your mind now auction lot of uh, people basically think auction is a mandatory part in the process and i will say to all of you guys no auction means what as a buying organization you are thinking that you will buy 1000 laptop for your employees and you are thinking the expected price of the laptop should be somewhere around 1500 usd each now what is happening is like you are getting different different quotation from different different supplier who are basically saying 1800 2000 so you will say are the 1800 supplier is not good but the other supplier who is basically giving 2000 2200 usd as the quotation it's look good you know it's looking good i want to buy it over there but it's almost 500 usd extra or 700 usd extra than mine i want to buy their product but it's a little bit more costly so what you will do you will basically call those suppliers and you will say you fight among each other i'm just joking and telling you there in a very uh, but you can say in a very joking way over there don't take it you know in a serious way but fight among each other who will give me the least price over there i will basically buy from that particular supplier why because you already know about a particular product and you have made up your mind some out of let's say 10 supplier three or four supplies there and three and four supplier will fight among each other whoever will give the least price you will buy it so always remember auction whenever you are going to do it when the first condition is the expected price and the supply quoted price is having a significant difference exactly and yes technically speaking you can go into the system and you can do the auction directly but in a project specific thing remember it will never happen why because you have to know the different different quotation from the supplier so it should generally be done after rfp in rfp you will get a different different auction from the not auction the quotation from the supply price quotation then you are going to say acha out of this 10 supplier this four supplier has given me good quotation but it's a little bit more costly so you know let me call them in the auction where they can do a real bidding against each other who will give the least price i will basically choose that particular supplier that is basically called as auction keep this thing in your mind very good but i think all of you understand either way the whole sourcing process when it will complete you will basically find out the source of supply very good then what you will do answer is very simple contract now what is the issue with the contract why contract is done so whenever you are let's say going to buy a smartphone or a laptop from a shop owner they are going to give you a bill why that bill is required all of you will say for warranty purpose but i will say that is the first thing what is the second thing basically to prove that this laptop or this smartphone you are the owner boss that is the first thing legally you are the owner second thing is like if you want this product service or basically the warranty services or other services over the repair services if you want to use it for this particular product the terms and condition and all those particular thing has been given over there and for using the warranty services repair service all those things you have to show this bill plain and simple why because it's a legal document same thing contract is a legal document or you can say a legal agreement between buying organization buying organization is the client okay sometimes we will use this particular uh, terminology this is a business terminology so please don't get confused huh? what is this buying organization so buying organization means, means basically client exactly for whom you are implementing ariba over there not the supplier okay between the buying organization and supplier <coughs> excuse me yeah very good manoj so we are going to see the contract and all those particular thing how the contract task are basically configured how the con uh, task is completed how this particular uh, what you can say uh, <coughs> excuse me uh, uh, the documents are worked over there all those particular thing but 
the major thing which i am going to basically tell you right now is most of the trainer will never touch on this point they will cover the whole of contract management and all of you will be very happy but when you will go into a project and there you will get a shock big shock the contract you know the contracting process is different and the contract template configuration which has been shown by the trainer is not matching you will say what what has happened either the client is wrong or the trainer was wrong let me tell you the client is correct over there yes some of the times they are wrong i do understand but it's not from the point of view of technology why because contract generally come in two flavor dfs and eca dfs basically stands for this is the main thing so all of you are going to ask me manoj what is the meaning of dfs what is the meaning of eca so i will say to all of you guys dfs basically means desktop file syncing eca basically means enhanced contract authoring over there so what's the difference manoj the difference is very simple dfs is a obsolete technology which used to only work with internet explorer that means if your client is working with dfs contract it will only work whenever the client is opening the ariba through the internet explorer if they open the ariba through the chrome browser firefox browser opera browser safari browser what will happen contract will not work now all of you have guessed it correctly let me tell all of you guys in 2017 only dfs has been made obsolete exactly by ariba but majority of the clients started implementing eca contract from 2018 mid it became a stabilized solution from 2018 mid yeah so right now if you go to a project you will never see dfs why because if you are working for ariba projects mostly the project there you will see the client will say my buyers over there are using apple products not every time but sometimes they are only having safari so so in that case what will happen so in that case what will happen so in that case it's pretty simple so in that case what will happen is dfs will not work exactly now okay manoj there are a lot of clients who will be using windows software exactly so they are also client will say i will not use ie for extra security i will use chrome or firefox it will not work dfs so that is why when you will go to a project right now you are not going to see anything on dfs everything will be in eca so that is why most of the trainer will never say to you that you know we are showing you the dfs contract because some of them don't know and some of the people who will basically know it they will not say it why because if they say this particular thing then you will ask them that boss why you are making us learn some obsolete thing you don't need to basically make us learn the obsolete particular thing so in our session you will see when we are, we are going to basically learn the contracting process we are going to work on eca only exactly similarly when we are going to work on the contract template configuration also those are eca contract templates by default why because as i said to all of you guys this is a practical sessions these are not like your uh, theoretical things so all of you should keep this thing in your mind exactly very very correct now once your contract has been done very good now all of you will ask me manoj what's the issue the issue is this contract you have to basically consume in downstream but downstream is having a different database upstream is having a different database so contract is present in the upstream database but where you will create a pr or po against that contract in downstream again a different database how just like you are having two hard disk and if you does not interconnect it with each other what will happen 
data will not flow from one hard disk to another hard disk over there. So what you have to do, you have to copy it and then paste it manually. Then it can be done. So how it can be done? That is where. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. These things comes into the picture. Contract compliance. Lot of Ariba trainers, even Ariba functional consultant think contract compliance is part of upstream and contract compliance is basically part of a downstream. I will say neither of it, or you can say both of it. Why? Because it's a it's a bridge through which the contract will move from upstream to downstream so bridge means what it will connect the both the landmass in this case don't think of it as a landmass think of it as the upstream database and the downstream database exactly so it's neither part of upstream neither part of downstream but remember if you want to implement contract compliance or if you hear any client is basically talking about contract compliance so you should immediately understand that client is having both upstream as well as downstream so it's at least a one year implementation project sometimes one year three months also depending on the how much customizations and all those how much requirement is there lot of people you know lot of participant a lot of consultant generally ask me Manoj, how you can say this project is having upstream and downstream you have never asked the client then i understood this is the contract compliance okay exactly so please keep this thing in your mind exactly so keep this thing in your mind now very good now let us come into downstream so all of you will say okay manoj but before that you are also going to talk about some configuration now i am not going into too much configuration stuff in today's session but let me tell all of you guys template is the major configuration here in upstream how you are going to do this template configuration over there basically in upstream template configuration is the major configuration why approval workflow configuration task configuration business rule uh, configuration transactional data can uh, you know transaction rules configurations all this particular thing can be done where within the template in upstream everything will happen on a template exactly so that is why i told all of you guys at the beginning so please don't think in ariba you will go and configure the transactional document configuration document type configuration approval workflow separately no everything is present in the template for the upstream part so that is why majority of the time you will see in upstream whenever we are going to go into the configuration sessions we are going to go into the template now all of you will basically think template is very easy let me tell all of you guys the first thing in our configuration session i will basically teach you you can have a single template for sourcing single template for contracting or you can have multiple template for sourcing project multiple temple for contract process how you should take a decision how you will take the decision that is the major important thing which all of you should basically should think exactly if you don't think on this particular thing this is the worst thing if you don't know the answer to this particular thing why because this should be the basically the starting point for your solution design <coughs> excuse me exactly so please keep this thing in your mind okay it's a very very important thing okay now let us come into the downstream part now in downstream part what is the major process i will say P2P. Procure to pay process. 
what is procreate to pay process i think all of you will say yes manoj i do understand this particular thing it's not a very big issue then i will say yes purchase requisition then what you will directly create a purchase requisition from the catalog items then approval workflow then po po will be sent to the supplier in ariba network supplier will basically send what asn advance shipping notification or order confirmation from the arima network to the buyer then buyer will do what buyer will basically do the gr which is also called as receiving in ariba buyer now once that has been done what next supplier will create the invoice in ariba network and this invoice will come to ariba buyer against this particular thing ir will be done so all of you will say manoj what is this ir invoice reconciliation two way check three way check pogr invoice will be checked everything okay then very simple payment okay now when you say it's a procured to pay process over here what do you mean why because most of the trainer will say this is the procured to pay process how i can say this is a procured to pay process i will say this is catalog item very good and then i will say to all of you guys what are this thing guys contract compliance why because contract is also bought from upstream to downstream now when you are basically going to replicate this contract from upstream to downstream over there where it is going to come in downstream in catalog only so those are also catalog item exactly so the first question if you ask any trainer how many types of catalog exist they will basically say static and punch out and i will say wrong why because theoretically they are correct practically they are wrong why because in the project it's never like that why because in a project you have to define this particular scenario based on one thing and that is non contract catalog item and this is basically what contract catalog item so contract catalog item same thing you are going to do so what's the difference between this process and that process this process is basically called as h2p so all of you are going to say acha manoj what do you mean by h2p source to pay i'm betting all of you guys that if you go to any project over there in a job in the job requirement you will see client is basically asking h2p mandatory h2p implementation knowledge p2p will also be there downstream will also be there but they will also write this particular thing most of the ariba candidates or the ariba participant they don't know what is h2p that's the difference the first question which the interviewer as a interviewer i will also ask what is the difference between procured to pay and source to pay they will say source to pay means starting at the sourcing and ending at the payment then basically i will say what's the major difference apart from the thing let's say i give you a po over there from the po basically can you identify which one is the h2p process which one is the p2p process now there what will happen lot of ariba consultant will not understand are manoj what is this i am not able to understand so then i will say this is a simple thing which we, which i basically shown i have not gone into integration here everything is happening in ariba buyer or ariba network no integration and here only your fumbling what will happen when you will go into the integration then they will ask acha manoj so for procured to pay and for source to pay you are having different different integration scenarios then i will say exactly correct acha so what we are going to do answer is very simple non contract cat catalog item means what it is directly loaded in the catalog section it will never have a contract id but on the other hand 
if you look at the contract catalog items these are basically contract which are moved from upstream to downstream with the help of contract compliance that means what it will have a contract id so that's the major difference and same knowledge as an integration consultant you are going to used to differentiate between h2p and p2p process why because the integration scenario in p2p and h2p process is different exactly now all of you will basically say okay manoj very good any other difference p2p process can be done in number of times but forced to pay process there is a limitation why because the contract will be signed for a certain value correct so or quantity so until that particular thing what will happen <coughs> excuse me certain value or certain quantity what will happen is like until that value or quantity does not get uh, expired or basically get fully used up what will happen you can create a pr but once the value or quantity is basically completed or completely exhausted what will happen you can't create a pr against it but for procured to pay process over there it's a non contract catalog item so you can basically in number of times order against that non contract catalog item why because this has been loaded directly in the catalog items until unless you remove that particular non contract catalog item from the catalog section you can order in number of times so this is the major difference between them now here also you will see from a process wise we are basically talking about this thing we are going to see it and basically from a configuration side we are basically going to see how to load a catalog through zip file how to do the catalog config okay how to do the approval config now yes before you ask me this particular question let me clarify downstream cat at approval configuration is very different from approval configuration again all of you will basically think acha so that means in erp and srm where you have done this approval flow there it was not like that but here it is why because in upstream approval configuration is part of the template and in downstream you will have a separate approval configuration that also we are going to see it now comes the integration all of you will basically think manoj integration means ci9 or cig which one we will do we will learn both why because you will understand there are certain usage case use case for ci9 certain use case for cig if you go to most of the client client don't have full idea about ariba but they will say i want to implement cig okay and guys if you are having any queries i will suggest please write it down or you know you know open up a notepad please write it down we are going to take your question answers you know questions over there but let me finish this particular content so that you are having at least a basic idea of what is the basics of ariva over there exactly so after this particular thing in today session only we will give you an opportunity to ask your queries over there exactly don't worry on that part okay but if you are having in between some question please just open up a notepad or a you know notebook copy you can just write it down and during the question number session in today session only you can ask me those queries exactly <coughs> excuse me why because you are seeing see i am opening up this notepad over there and i am basically recalling all this information from my project work and then i am basically making you understand exactly so i don't have the luxury of a ppt to guide me over there exactly it's just the experience yeah so in between if the questions come over there in between if you are having a chat what will happen is like i will forget the content exactly so that is why we always ask you guys all your queries will be answered in every session but this question answer session will be a part of our session but not during the content presentation exactly now integration 
now all of you are basically thinking acha manoj integration means integration configuration how i will do cig configuration how i will do cin configuration then i will say to all of you guys let me tell all of you guys it's not about how you are going to configure the ariba system erp system or ariba network over there let me tell all of you guys how many of you are having good knowledge of basis how many of you are uh, having good knowledge of pi the answer is none answer is none why because we are functional consultant so if somebody comes to you and ask hey boss can you work in estrust transaction code in erp can you create web services or enterprise services can you activate them can you test them all of you what you are going to say hey boss what i am going to do in that that is not my you know uh, work over there generally functional consultant don't do those kinds of work exactly so how can you basically understand or basically think that in erp you are going to do the whole configuration for integration 75% of the configuration will be done by the basis consultant and uh, you know technical persons and pi people 25% will be done by us but but it does not mean that we will not do anything exactly we are going to do a lot of things but it's mainly coordinating between the basis pi technical people everybody of them yeah and some configuration we have to do it but the first thing first as a integration consultant i'm not talking about as ariba functional consultant why ariba functional consultant means he will work on upstream and downstream as a integration consultant what is the major work which you all of you have to do the answer is pretty simple you have to design the scenario why because i think now all of you can understand the difference between p2p and h2p p2p means what procure to pay means you don't need a upstream just downstream is more than enough but if you look at h2p h2p is having both upstream plus downstream <coughs> excuse me guys exactly so that is the major difference now so i think all of you have basically got a little bit of idea that when you are going to do the integration scenario building you understand whether a client is only implementing ariba upstream only implementing ariba downstream or implementing both ariba upstream and downstream based on that there will be different different process if they are only implementing downstream they will have the p2p process they are implementing upstream plus downstream they will have the p2p process as well as h2p process so in that case what will happen you have to do two integration in case of downstream only scenario one integration very good out of this particular thing then you will be having different different automated procurement non automated procurement non automated procurement means what your buyers are going to basically create the requirement automated procurement means what to the help of planning tool or other things the requirement will get generated so how that particular scenario will be integrated in the ariba system all of this particular thing is covered within our integration solution design this is the main what you can say heart and brain of the integration if you don't understand this thing you are gone you cannot work no matter how much technical good technical knowledge how much configuration knowledge you are having you are gone because as a integration consultant you must know this thing so that is our major objective over here now once that has been done what is the next thing we are going to see the mass data load what is mass data load mass data load basically are basically called as uh, you know loading of the master data with the help of csv files in ariba manually so all of you are going to say manoj integration means integration is of two type master data integration transactional data integration so 
they are automatic right and i will say exactly once you have done the configuration it will become automatic so what's the issue the issue over here is i think all of you are forgetting that the master data which are present in ariva must be matching that of ariva for example purchasing unit i am not talking about purchasing organization purchasing group purchasing organization purchasing group is present in both erp as well as in ariva but if you ask purchasing unit purchasing unit concept does not exist in erp but is exist in ariva so if the data is not present within your erp how are you going to integrate that data or replicate this data into ariva of course you can't so how you can load that purchasing unit within your ariva system with the help of mass data load similarly next thing commodity code in ariva we we will generally follow always the un spsc commodity code but if you look at in erp you will have material group material group is always custom defined according to client's requirement if you bring the custom version material group into uh, ariva's commodity code it will immediately throw up an error why because it was expecting unis spsc commodity code so of course the loading of unis spsc commodity code has to be done with the help of mass data load give you example there are other things also which you will see and lastly the integration config exactly but remember our approach to the configuration is that from a functional consultant okay what are the things which you should know what is the shared secret which you must be knowing over there as an integration consultant what is the web services what are the you know data which you have to give in the web services of course we are not going to configure that thing but you should give this particular knowledge to the basis guys the technical guys exactly you are not going to do this activity enterprise services web services configuration you are not going to do it but the basis guys and the technical guys will come to you and they will ask boss what you are you are going to use where you are going to use how you are going to use exactly that is the point over there <coughs> excuse me so this particular thing we are going to use it over here okay now the last thing and another thing also we will basically see over here is in downstream specifically is guided buying that is also important because guided buying whenever you are going for a downstream implementation or upstream plus downstream implementation guided buying has become a very very important thing why because its user interface is very very unique much like amazon flipkart over there so that is why most of the client are expecting that you will implement guided buying for their buyers especially casual buyers so that also we are going to see in our downstream and now once we have completed this thing so what we will see next over here reporting now reporting before i go into reporting all of you should generally ask manoj there are only two types of consultant in the ariba project the ariba functional and the integration consultant and i will say exactly correct what about the basis and all those time the you know, basis and technical consultant they are basically shared services exactly i'm not talking from a sap point of view i'm saying they are shared with some other project we will loan them during the integration and once it is completed done all of you are going to then ask me manoj why there is no consultant technical consultant for ariba then i will say it's a very good question because there is no ariba technical consultant why again this is a cloud solution cloud solution means what the server is basically maintained by ariba itself so let's say for example you will ask me manoj i want to add a custom field in the po screen as as well as in the po database also database table what will happen there is no ariba technical guys so i will say yes from a service provider point of view don't have ariba technical person but from ariba side you will have ariba engineering team 
those guys are basically responsible for the Ariba technical things. That means you want a custom field in the PO screen and you want that particular field to get captured in the PO database table. What you have to do, you have to do the enhancement request in connect.ariba.com and the Ariba engineering team is basically going to study a requirement and they are going to do the code changes. And remember, that will reflect only for your client, not for every client. Exactly. So there is no Ariba technical consultant over there. Keep this thing in your mind. So when I will basically go into reporting, there's a common misunderstanding. Manoj, reporting means we need a webber in ERP or in SRM. Same thing over here. Since we don't have a technical consultant over there, you know, client will ask us to add custom fields in the reports with custom formula for every custom fields to be calculated. How we can do that without a technical guy? So that is the first thing which we are going to show you. How to customize and how to config the report functionally. Not technically, exactly. That means without the enhancement request as a functional consultant, how you can customize it and how you can basically config it so that you can deliver it as per the client's requirement over there. Second thing is, Manoj, uh, I think Ariba reports are not so good. Then I will tell you guys from my project exposure, what I have basically seen is like whenever we have basically shown this particular reporting solution to our clients over there, the clients were very, very happy. In fact, for the procurement, what was happening was like they were basically using the what? Ariba system for doing their reporting. Yeah, for the other things, they were using BI system. But for Ariba, they will use it for procurement based reporting. So the next thing basically, which all the client will ask is automate it. Why? Because you cannot run a report in the foreground in the production system. So how to do the automation also, that also we will learn. That we are going to see in reporting, exactly. These are very, very important thing. It might seem a very trivial thing, but you will go to a project and you will see in that project, one Ariba functional consultant is sitting. That guy is running the report, waiting for the report to finish for three hours. From the system, they will not move. Then after that, they will download the report in Excel. Over there in the Excel, they will basically apply some formula, do some calculation, and then they will basically send this particular report output to the client's higher management. Now imagine that guy every week has to download 20 reports and 25 reports and have to do this activity. 25 to 30 reports every week. But I will show you guys, you can totally automate it. Why? Because customize and config the report functionally that we will do it and then automate it. How? Background job, how to schedule a background job. And once the scheduling of background job has been done, the report output can be basically seen in the system or it can be mailed directly to any number of users automatically in their official inbox or corporate email ID inbox. That also we are going to show you. <coughs> Excuse me, yeah. So this is basically the content guys, which we will basically follow in our training sessions. Okay, so remember this particular thing. So that is why I said to all of you guys, so please don't think this is a theoretical sessions or like, you know, like a end user session. No, it's not like that. So that is why all of you were thinking about PPT or just the Ariba system. Okay, this, this, this done. No, it is not like that. Our methodology is different. Why? Because our goal is different. Our objectives are different over there. Our objective is make sure that our participants are basically are able to understand Ariba and when they will go into a project, they would be able to deliver on the project. It's not like, you know, theoretical knowledge well and good, but in project, everybody will basically chicken out. No, that is not our goal. Second thing, guys, apart from this uh, sessions, you will see every session will be basically be recorded. Exactly. 
as of now this session is also getting recorded every session will be recorded and this particular thing will be shared in a g drive account with all of you guys so once you register with us what will happen is like for all of you guys you are going to get a g drive access and that access is for your whole lifetime so there we will not only upload the session recordings there we will basically give you a lot of documents on arriva also over there okay similarly we will also give you the arriva system for your practice over there arriva buyer as well as arriva network for two months exactly for two months you don't have to think like it's one month or for let's say one half of the morning or two half of the morning no for two months full 24 into 7 but let me just clarify one thing all of you will have the option to do the configurations template configuration uh, run the process flow uh, catalog configuration and all those other things but you won't have the super admin role super admin role means what that means you can't create a user can you know can't create a or can't delete a user over there can't create a role can't assign a role those super admin roles but the normal configuration like the template you know template configuration over there okay similarly this particular thing catalog loading catalog configuration approval configuration all those particular thing you will be getting access yeah now before we basically show to all of you guys uh, what we are going to share in the g drive with all of you guys we are going to take a small 5 minutes break okay after the break we will show you what are the document which we are going to share with all of you guys and then we are going to take the question from all of you guys exactly so please don't go away guys so just wait for 5 minutes we will basically show you what are the things which we are going to share in the g drive with all of you guys and then we will have the question answer session exactly so just we will take a quick break of 5 minutes yeah thank you guys
hello uh, sana am i audible to you yes manoj i can hear you yeah uh, thanks sana uh, can you please share your screen yeah yeah I have already sent the request. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Sana, basically, I am able to see your screen over there. So, guys, <coughs> excuse me. So, please be uh, a little bit attentive. So, this is basically the uh, G drive access which we are basically talking about over there. So, yes, this is a very important thing for all of you guys. Why? We, because you will see our sessions are very unique. Our teaching patterns are also very unique. And similarly, the methodology which all of you have to follow over there. It's not like, you know, you have to come to the session. Okay, watch a uh, presentation over there or a lecture over there and go back. No, if you want a successful career, basically you also have to work over there. See, you will see that we are also working hard in that particular session, you have to also work. Because at the end of the day, even if we give a missile, to a particular person who don't know how to use that missile, it won't be advantageous for that particular person. So all of you have to basically work hard on this particular thing. Yes, this will basically give you the result in your project. So first thing first, the first folder which we will be basically sharing with all of you guys is the session recording. So Sana, can you just click on the session recording folder? So yes, you can basically see all this particular uh, sessions recording. For every session, we will basically keep it over here. Yeah, every session. So generally, this generally take one day or two day to basically upload it over there. So even for today's session also, that will be uploaded on Monday or on Tuesday over there. Why? Because this is basically in a raw format, recordings are there. It needs to be converted into an MP4 and then basically it has to be uploaded over there. And yes, you have to go through the recordings because in today's session, you have seen so much of information. In our normal session, you will see a lot of other information. So you have to go through this recording multiple times. This is going to help you over there. And this particular access is for the whole lifetime. So whenever you want to brush up your knowledge, just open this G drive and watch the recordings. Exactly. Now, uh, Sana, can you go back to the main folder, please? Yeah. Now, so the second folder basically is basically for the Ariba access. That means you need to basically find out what is the URL, what is the uh, user ID, what is the password for Ariba buyer. Same thing for Ariba network also for the supplier account. So here only you will basically get all the information about the Ariba access over there. So this will be be present for all of the participants who will register over there. They will get their details in the Ariba access and similarly how to basically access the system also. It's a step by step procedure written over there with a very good screenshot. So please do read this particular document before you log into the Ariba, Ariba system for your practice. Exactly. It's very important. Okay. Uh, so Sana, can you go back to the main folder, please? Yeah, so third is basically the notepad. Now this notepad, just like in today's session, guys, I have basically opened up a notepad and, and I've written the different, different things. So to make it easier for all of you guys to remember the things, why? Because standard material of SAP are, you know, crap. Why? Because if you want to learn it quickly, a little bit, or you want to basically uh, understand the main things, you won't be understanding it properly. So what we have done is like, we have basically prepared a lot of notepads over there with a step-by-step -step knowledge. So uh, Sana, can you just click on the new notepad? Now just click on the catalog.txt, the first, uh, the first uh, notepad, yeah. Now you can see basically in every session, we will open up a notepad. Okay, and here only we will basically write what are the things, what are the main points over there, how you have to do this particular thing. So you want to recap your knowledge after going through the recordings of the session, you can also refer to this notepad. But remember this notepads are standard things which are used for your study aid. Basically when you're learning something new, we will use the notepad to write down the important points and the steps over there. Exactly, so these are custom prepared so that all of you can get help from this notepad. So for every session, we are having one notepad. This notepad will be upload, 
uploaded over there. Now, some of you are going to basically say to me, Manoj, what is this new notepad and old notepad over there? So as I said to all of you guys, Ariba constantly changes everything. Okay, so whenever they change something which has become a stable release over there, what will happen? <coughs> Excuse me. What will happen? The thing is like we will automatically update the same thing in our session so that all of you can get to understand what's the difference between the old one and new one. The old one will be there and the new one will be also be there. So you can understand the difference also if you want to know it. So that is why both old and new is there. Exactly. And remember, this is not a one time activity in future. Also, let's say in 2021. August or September, something has basically got changed. So what will happen is like you will see the new notepad content will be moved to the old notepad content and the new notepad content will be updated with the new notepads. Which will reflect the new things exactly. So even those batches which we have completed earlier, something new is coming. We are going to update for all of the participants, even for those participants who have completed the training with us also. So no need to worry about all those particular things. Yeah. So Sana, can you please go back to the main folder? <coughs> Excuse me. Now the documents. Now this particular documents we will see. Uh, Sana, can you just click on the downstream part over there? Yeah. So these are basically the configuration guidebooks, guys. Now, of course, these are standard guidebooks. Yes. But remember, this is just for your technical knowledge because some of you will basically come to me and say, Manoj, I want to increase my technical knowledge. Okay. For that particular purpose, we have given this configuration guide. This guidebooks also you won't be able to find it in the Google. Why? Because for this particular thing, you need access to connect.ariva.com. And connect.ariva.com means you just cannot register just like in you have to register in HDN. You need to be a partner or a client employee with a proper corporate email ID who is a partner or a client of SAP Ariva, they can only create their user ID in Ariva Connect. Otherwise, you cannot basically create it. The user ID only. And if you're not able to create it, you cannot download it. So you don't have to look for anywhere else. You want some more theoretical information? This is for your help. But I will suggest don't go for it. Why? Because even till now, after eight years working in Ariva, I have got no time to finish any of this particular configuration guide fully. Yes, some things, advanced things, which I want to basically understand, I will go to page number 100, or I will go to page number 140 or 160 to find out a little bit more about that particular thing. But I have not read this book like a normal book from page one to page 400. Why? Because I don't have that time. The first thing, second thing is like, it's having quite complex technical wordings which you will not understand. So I will suggest our session is more than enough. But if you want to increase your technical knowledge, this is the way to go forward. Yeah, uh, Sana, can you please move on to the next, uh, you know, not next, main folder, yeah, main folder. Main folder, yeah. Next is the certification material. Now, all of you are basically interested in certification. A lot of people will come to me and say, Manoj, how to prepare for the certification, Ariba certification. So for this certification, we have provided the standard materials for all of you guys. And yes, 80% of the content of the certification is covered in our session, but 20% is missing. Why? Because certification is having theoretical knowledge in your nature. And our sessions are very much practical oriented from a project perspective. So that is why 20% is missing. So for all of you, Guys who are basically going to go for the certification, I will say complete the session. Once you complete the session, then you will find out the different different books like AR 111, AR 510, 520 like this. You have to read this document mandatorily. Exactly. Then basically the first folder you will click. Uh, Sana, can you click on the dump any bytes over there? Ah, uh, click on the first one. 
Uh, can you scroll down a little bit? Yeah. So basically, these are uh, yeah, yeah. It's more than enough. So uh, guys, these are basically the questions which has already came in Ariba's uh, certification over there. And as all of you know that in SAP, the questions which have already came in the certification that is repeated over there. Sixty percent of the questions are basically repeated from the old certification. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have got this particular mock up from a lot of our participants over there who have basically cleared this certification from there only. We have basically got it and we have updated it over there. So the same thing is also going to help you in understanding where you are standing for the certification. Similarly, this will also increase your chance to clear the certification in one shot. So after your session has been completed, first those AR 510, AR 520 books you have to read. Then you have to prepare yourself with this dumps. Then once you're confident, you go and give the certification. Exactly. Now, Sana, can you go back to the main folder? <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, and the last one, basically, you will see, guys, the Learning Hub videos over there. So these are basically, to some of you, you know, we are having diverse background of participant who is participating in our session. Some of them are already working in Ariba. Some of them are having basic knowledge of Ariba. Some of them are having no knowledge of Ariba. So if somebody is present over there who is having no knowledge in Ariba at all, okay, so how to basically skill up? So these are the learning hub videos present over there. So uh, uh, Sana, can you just click on the Ariba sourcing one? First folder. So you can see basically different, different, uh, Video and audio basically we have captured from the learning hub over there for each of this particular topic and we have uploaded over there so that as a very new person who is totally new to Ariva, having no knowledge, you can also skill up considerably by looking at this learning hub videos over there. So these are remember what you can say, uh, end user based process flow, which is being shown in this MP4. So if you're very much new or you want to hone your end user knowledge over there, you can have a look at the Learning Hub videos that also we are basically prepared. But remember, see, anybody can go through it, but mostly it is recommended to those people who are very new to Ariva at all. Okay, so in that case, you can also refer to this particular thing. Okay, so these are all the documentation guys, which we are going to share with all of you guys in the G drive over there. Exactly. Apart from our sessions. Yeah. So this is a complete thing. If you look at from a training purpose, this is a complete thing which we are basically going to, <coughs> excuse me, going to share with all of you guys in the GDEP. And remember, this access is for your whole lifetime. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, I think thanks, Sana, over here for uh, showing us this particular uh, document over there in the GDEP folder folder which we are going to share with all of our participants. Thanks, Sana, very much for here. No problem, Manoj. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome, Sana. Yeah. Now, guys, uh, those of you who are having question, you will see in the GoToTraining app at the top left-hand side. Yeah. On the app, not on your, uh, uh, you know, screen over there, desktop or laptop screen. You will see a small icon with the hands over there. Just click on it once. What will happen is like I would be able to see your hand against your name in this go to training app and I will understand that you will be having a question. Exactly. OK, so let me unmute you guys. Yeah, uh, Srinivas, can you please go ahead with your query? <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, uh, so Srinivas, uh, you need to just uh, click on the unmute button over there in the go to training app. Yeah. Hi, Manoj. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Srinivas. So, uh, uh, Manoj, uh, so I was actually not a functional consultant. I was just more into a technical stuff, uh, into data migration using SAP BODS and uh -huh. uh, MD. So uh, I, I, I was just curious, like uh, I wanted to like uh, be uh, like knowledgeable on functional side as well. So that's why I chose this uh, option, SAP Alipa. So on your on a personal note, how effective would it be if I gain knowledge on this one? 
okay so first of all i am going to give the answer on this part shrinivas but before that you know the basics of procurement what is a po what is a uh, uh, invoice basic knowledge i am not talking yeah, about yeah, yeah. advanced basic thing yeah. like the basic knowledge but the I difference know. between purchase equation and a purchase order basic difference over there correct correct yes i am aware of that yeah so remember we have basically trained a lot of participant who were basically from technical background from sap even to some non sap person some of them were from oracle some of them were from jd edwards yes we are basically trained but always the first thing which we will say see the thing is like we are not doing some meaningless training over here what we do Good. believe is like we are basically sharing our knowledge so the basic things which we will expect from all of you guys is you should have some basic knowledge on the procurement side basic knowledge if you are having that particular thing yes you can have a career in ariva and the second thing is like if you look at the career in ariva so it's a new thing in the market mm -hmm. yes you know it is there from 2010 onwards but ariva came to the center of attraction from 2017 onwards not before that so there okay. is a lot of project where ariva is being implemented and in the future also there will be a hell lot of new implementation hell lot of support is going around and hell lot of other support projects are also going to come so yes for the next 10 years 10 to 11 years i think it will give a very steady growth if you move to ariva solutions over there that's the Got first it. thing okay second thing yeah. is like nobody can predict after that why because lot of people will basically say 15 years also it's okay but my point of thinking is if you look at any cloud solution always think of it from a 10 to 11 year perspective don't think of it from a 15 to 20 years perspective over there yeah. so from the work opportunity from the uh, career opportunity from the uh, growth opportunity in career i will suggest ariva is much more uh, growth oriented over there but for the next 10 to 11 years you don't have to struggle that's the first thing second thing is like if you want to basically jump over over there so mm -hmm. if you are not having any knowledge in ariva yes it will be a little bit tough but remember that particular thing is going to be tough for anything why because if you are jumping from technical to functional whether it's ariva or hybrid it does not matter you have to face a little bit of struggle it's going to be same bit of effort we got to put in exactly in anything whether you are thinking of success factor or hybrid or ariva everywhere it is the same thing but yeah. i will suggest from a ariba perspective yes this is a very good thing second thing is like think of it crm is not going to be replaced by hybrid as of now it's a basically what you can say hybrid architecture which they are following in everywhere similarly for success factor also they are mm -hmm. also following a hybrid architecture with hr but you look at ariba over there ariba okay. basically is going to be replacing the srm srm is basically one of the client you know software which is used by sap over there right so all the clients who are using srm they are going to replace this srm with that of ariva over there so that is why its future is much more impactful if you are moving to basically move into ariva over there but yes a little bit of struggle will be there that particular thing you know it's a part and parcel of any particular person who basically wants to move from technical to functional that's the first thing second thing is i will suggest this is the god given opportunity <laughs> right yeah. now this is basically the god given opportunity to learn over there why because once april or may will come next year everything mm -hmm. is going to basically open up over there yeah we'll be back to normal and recruitment will start on full pace exactly so by that time what i always believe is like this is not only for you universe but for everybody okay. luck what is luck what i always believe is luck is equal to hard work plus opportunity you give your hard work make yourself ready over there by learning by devoting time over there now once the opportunity starts coming in over there maybe not in the first opportunity but in the second or in the third in the fourth opportunity you will get it so that is basically called as luck so yeah. in this way basically i will say this is the god given time to basically learn yourself something new work on this particular thing work on this thing for four to five months it will give you a very good uh, 
grasp of this knowledge and the second thing is like then you are going to ask me manoj what about this knowledge so this knowledge remember this is not the theoretical knowledge why because whatever i have done in the six projects in my mm-hmm. whole ariba career that we are going to basically see in our session so basically sure. this particular knowledge if you are going able to show in the say, you know interview session so over there immediately mm-hmm. your interviewer will understand that yes this guy has worked in a project otherwise these things cannot be said by this particular participant itself so that is why this is the god given time over there if you want to basically jump into ariva i will suggest this is the best thing over there and if you look at the future potential i will suggest 10 to next 10 to 11 years is much better got it got it clear yeah any other yeah. queries anyone uh no yeah uh, you answered my question and uh, the point is pretty clear now yeah thank you sinivas yeah thank you anush Uh, just a moment. Yeah, uh, Vingatish. Uh, yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah Vingatish. I'm able to hear you. Okay. See. Uh, okay. Let me let me give my background. So because I come from the uh, uh, procurement business background, and I've got uh, you know SAP experience as well. and also yeah. uh, the end user ariba experience right with, with both yeah. jd ariba as well as with uh, sap ad thing okay and uh, the, the purpose of my uh, you know the sap ariba certification plan as well as uh, this course is to make sure i enhance the skills because we are undergoing a, a sap deployment in my company organization and then we have to take care of that and then i'm part of a project on this right so that yeah. it it will give me hands on experience and then i don't need to really really you know blink in front of uh, you know the consultants wherever when i have to demonstrate myself from the business point of view as a business consultant from point of view okay exactly. so a couple of questions uh, which i have is like you mentioned that um, Uh, whenever we have this contract um, you know the upstream is in place mm-hmm. that uh, don't know the data have to go through when well, you have to it's more like you know you you up, upgrade you know, update the vendor information right you go for the vendor yeah. catalog and then you update the and then again because what i am correlating from the business per- perspective it is like you've got the master data right where yeah. you have all your material master data and everything with the catalog everything will be configured mm-hmm. and then that will also be there so yeah. when it comes to uh you know when say for example if my organization is going for an up, up, you know upstream and downstream together yeah. and then how does that work who will take this you know the success and predecessor role will, will that be the erp or ariba or it has to be done together and how does that work first that's a very good question so to give you the answer over there your answer lies in one point basically which i have basically shown so it's neither predecessor neither successor over there depending mm-hmm. on your client what process they are using and in this case as you said your client is using upstream and downstream they are also i will basically ask which kind of procurement they are doing direct procurement or indirect procurement automated both. procurement both. yeah automated procurement or uh, like uh, manual procurement over there so in mm-hmm. this way what will happen is like we will decide the different different scenarios over there now once we understand the scenario you will see that in p2p what will happen is like po will be created in ariba mm-hmm. it will be replicated back into erp but if you look at the h2p process over there same thing will happen at the po level but the invoice reconciliation Correct. and payment will happen in a very different way similarly Correct. if you look at the difference between a direct and indirect procurement in that case indirect procurement means what once again leading system is ariba over there but if you look at the direct procurement the leading system will be that of your erp why because the planning tools are mrp internal order which will basically decide in erp and those things are not part of your general procurement process why because these are part of your production and planning module over there correct correct so that correct. is why to give the answer it's neither predecessor neither successor depending on the client's requirement what will happen mm-hmm. is like there will be multiple uh integration solution over there we have to identify it we have to design this thing so in our session you will see one of the session 
is fully built on integration solution designing why because i cannot just give a uh, specific example of one client why Correct. because most of you will be working in different client over there so i Correct. have to talk about all these scenarios over there Correct. so that Correct. is why you will see in that particular session integration solution designing we will okay. be talking about the different different transactional data integration and the master data integration how it happens and what are the different you know different permutation combination of the scenarios over there and there you will get a good idea but in general it's neither predecessor neither successor depending on each of this uh, scenario the solution has to be defined in a very different way okay i got your point and uh, the second question uh, is like uh, say for example if uh, upstream is not part of you know the configuration because it's a decision taken by a client right and then i'm going to have use one it's predominantly i mean to say it's only the itp right hmm. so what ITP. happens how how does that um, master data piece like uh-huh. so it's, it's like you know direct inflow from um, the erp to uh, ariba uh-huh. isn't it uh-huh. so always remember master data integration okay. is always a bidirectional data flow that means it can okay. be created in erp and it can be replicated to ariba similarly it can be created in ariba and it can be replicated back into erp mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. either of this particular process it will support but generally in majority of the client what we will see is like they are doing this master data uh, maintenance master data updation master data modification all of these things where in erp and yep. Yep. to some extent i will suggest you will see this particular difference here in the mass data load and you will basically love your erp back much better than ariba for master data maintenance at least master data maintenance why because here in ariba you have to work with csv file comma separated value file where you will be having 5000 10000 15000 data records and you have to manually maintain the csv file correct correct yep. to that particular thing lsmw or if you are having a technical guy bdc those things are much easier in uh, erp to maintain the master data so in majority of the client they will maintain the master data as well as create modify the master data in erp and the same replication will happen into ariba but ariba supports both the, not ariba basically the integration supports both both the solution or both the de- design okay thank you so much that that solves my answers and then i'm happy to move on yeah yeah, yeah. thank you vengatesh excuse me okay so i think there is one question from kishore why can't we do h2p in upstream instead of doing it in downstream see uh, kishore the, the thing is like if you look at h2p process over there h2p process please don't think it's just beginning from the pr part why because before creating the pr the contract catalog item must exist and before this contract catalog item what will happen contract compliance must be done and before this contract compliance can be done it ha- the contract has to be created and contract will be created from the sourcing project when the once the source of supply is there so h2p process basically means what your process is beginning from the sourcing once the sourcing has been done then you will do the contracting once the contracting has been done through the contract compliance you will replicate this data from upstream to downstream and once it is basically present in downstream as a contract catalog item against this contract you are going to do this whole process so that is why <coughs> excuse me guys h2p cannot be done either in upstream only or in downstream only for this particular thing it will need both upstream and downstream why because pr to payment process is part of downstream but similarly sourcing and contracting will happen in upstream and contract compliance will act as a bridge between upstream to downstream so that is why h2p means upstream and downstream both are required mandatorily but if you look at p2p p2p does not have anything from the upstream side why because here it is non contract catalog item which is loaded in the downstream side within the catalog section as a part of catalog cif catalog interchangeable file format over there so for this particular thing you don't need upstream that is why it can only be done in downstream so that's the difference between p2p and h2p so if you are having any queries uh, kisho i am just unmuting you you can basically unmute yourself and ask your query also over there yeah i have unmuted you yeah, so if you are having yeah. any query yeah please go ahead and ask see coming to these databases like uh, why yeah. ariba has given two databases option like you know and uh, I, I, i will be basically 
yeah let me just answer this particular thing over there so frankly speaking we should not be knowing this answer or knowing this thing that ariba is having to database over there why because as a particular functional consultant i have never seen that but few of my friends who is working as a sap ariba product development manager they are working on this solution so they have seen this thing but if you look at this particular thing i will tell you when ariba in 2010 launched this cloud solution ariba cloud solution there was two solutions over there not one solution right now if you go to ariba over there ariba will say ariba buyer is one solution but at that time 2010 ariba buyer were basically consisting of two solution upstream downstream so upstream solution was basically having a separate url with a separate database separate application downstream was basically a separate application with separate database a separate url now the client mostly got fed up why i have to my buyer has to use two two url over there combine both this upstream and downstream into two in a single url over there so what ariba did was like in the user interface part they have combined both this application into a single application but from a database level they cannot do it why because on a technical level if you see the data structure and everything tables database tables everything has to be mapped properly that is a huge exercise that means almost like building a new software so ariba knew that if they are going to do that thing so it will be a very big issue but from a user point of view functional consultant point of view from a end user point of view you will see only one url with upstream and downstream solution over there so you will believe that acha it is having only one database only one application but in reality it was designed as a two separate database two separate application right now the client was basically asking over there from 2010 why two url make it uh, a part of single url and change the user interface so they have basically changed the user interface but the database layer and the presentation logic layer they are two separate thing but on the application layer it's a single thing okay coming to my second question like uh, let's say now i have got license for uh, downstream only yeah or or you know upstream only yeah so how can i how can i go with this contract catalog items uh so you are basically talking about only upstream solution or downstream solution or both i have got license for only upstream okay so in that case you won't be able to do any p2p process so what you can do is like you can have only these three solutions and after doing the publishing the contract process will end over there in ariba side so that is why when we will But go to the integration to be can be done right no 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 it cannot be done i will tell you not in the way basically which you are thinking why because as of now when i am talking about h2p process over here i am talking from the ariba perspective i think the way you are basically talking about h2p process you are basically talking about the integration scenario why because if a client is only having upstream solution till contracting also only you can do it in ariba why because you don't have any downstream you cannot create pr po and all those things in ariba why because you don't have your client doesn't have the ariba downstream solution so what you will do is like in this case in the integration scenario you will replicate this contract from ariba to erp once it has been replicated as a contract over there in erp against that contract you are going to create a po gr receiving uh, sorry gr payment uh, invoice and payment over there so yes that is a part of your integration solution so yes has to be can be done only for your client who is having only upstream solution but as a part of integration solution not as a part of only ariba solution any other queries kishu yeah 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 see yeah. uh, like you know coming back to like uh, uh, i don't know about ariba so uh, coming to srm system we have uh, uh, service hierarchies right mm -hmm. so is there any any limitation or something like that you know in service hierarchies see first of all you are basically talking about i think not service hierarchy you are talking about outline hierarchies right 
ఈ అవుట్ లైన్ ఆల్సో లైక్ అండ్ నో కమింగ్ బ్యాక్ టు కాంట్రాక్ట్ లైన్ ఐటమ్స్ లైక్ యునో హౌ మెనీ లైక్ వాట్ ఈస్ ద మాక్సిమం లిమిట్ ఫర్ ద లైన్ ఐటమ్స్ see as of yeah. now if you look at ariba over there ariba does not basically have any limitation but the limitation over here will be there in the excel side why because within excel side uh, you we, as we will be working in contract over there with the help of document you will see we will be using word document and excel document for capturing all this information we won't be using the ariba screen for using it yeah it's a different thing from erp so in excel you will see there is a limitation not in ariba but in excel what is that limitation more than 64000 i think 535 data rows cannot be entered in any excel so yes this is an example of your issue with your excel part but from ariba side there is no limitation but yes srm erp there is a limitation same similarly if you look at erp over there also you will have only eight levels of approval workflow yeah in least previous time actually like we had the clm system yeah where we had uh, more than 50000 uh, line items in a contract yeah so we used to get you know session uh, related issues and you know uh, kind of i mean uh, anyway clm product development team provided a solution like is there any limitation uh, from ariba no 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 from ariba side there is no limitation over there similarly in the approval workflow also there is no limitation you can basically if you want to design a 100 level approval workflow that also you can do technically but yes that you are going to design it so what will happen is like your performance is going to get degraded like anything right because coming, coming approval workflow will be approval different thing yeah coming to po approval process let's say i had some custom up, uh, workflows like whatever the brf or whatever mm-hmm. custom rules maintained in my ecc system mm-hmm. so how can i design this custom workflow into ariba system yeah you can do it over there with the help of see there is two things one is static approval and another is dynamic approval static approval means what you will basically hard code the user or the rules over there based on which the approval will happen dynamic approval means basically it will depend on the price commodity code or certain things based on that you are going to determine who is the proper approval so i reckon you are talking about the second situation when you are basically talking about the custom approval workflow yeah okay so these yeah. things so that can, can be done yeah that can be done in upstream also it can be done in downstream we can do it in a much more complex way with the help of approval lookup table mm. Okay, yeah. coming to yeah. options sir, like is uh, what what uh, types of option uh, options you know ariba supports yeah i, I think ariba supports five or six types of option over there that english dutch and all those particular kinds of uh, options will be there i think six type of options are supported by ariba over there okay okay yeah okay. that's all that's all from my side thank you thank you man yeah welcome kishu yeah so guys uh, this was basically our demo session over there to those of you who are basically interested in joining our sessions over there uh, i will suggest uh, you basically contact your sales uh, you know our sales representative over there once you basically contact the sales representative they will basically enroll you for the uh sessions over there and yes uh remember from our first session onwards yeah it will be first session we will basically not make much more detailed thing yeah today session you don't compare today session actually there was no information at all exactly basic information was there first session you will see the real thing yeah and from second and third session you will understand what what exactly the detailed things which we are basically talking about over there okay so basically we we are planning to basically start this session uh, weekend session evening session from next saturday or this coming saturday that is basically from 28th of november over there we are basically going to start yeah so please do register in advance over there okay and then basically you will get the link over there to basically continue no no not only sunday saturday and sunday every saturday and sunday evening exactly excuse me yeah 
so basically you can basically decide on this thing and if you also having some um, you know if you want some more information about this particular timings also same thing i have also given but still if you want to confirm the same thing you can basically ask our sales consultant they will also confirm the same thing to all of you guys over there yeah exactly so time to buckle up guys so we can conclude our session for today but from next week onwards everybody has to go into a serious mood why because this is not it uh, what you can say like a casual thing you will see you will get a lot of information it's just like a, you know a hypersonic missile but how you are using this knowledge this skill set this is going to matter the most when you are working in a project that is where you will feel its uh, significance similarly when you will go in the interview immediately once you start saying all this particular thing what you have seen in our session immediately your interviewer will understand hey this guy has worked in the project otherwise these things cannot be said exactly so don't worry on this particular thing but yes all of you also have to work a little bit what are the different different task what are the different different work you have to do it i will basically guide all of you guys over there exactly but i will always urge all of you guys when you come into our session come with open mind you know don't think like hey manoj in asap we have done this thing why in ariba we are doing like this because the thing is like i also did the same mistake so that is why my first project was a disaster a lot of escalation but right now at that time in 2011 12 you can afford a disaster not you know not an issue but right now you cannot basically afford a disaster so exactly you have to learn the things in a much detailed way in a much more depth over there so that we are going to continue with guys from next saturday onwards so please get in touch with the sales consultant to get yourself registered okay so let us conclude our session for today once again thanks dipali thanks sana for conducting this session and thanks to all of you guys for participating in our session we are going to meet once again on saturday at the same time from 7 pm ist yeah thank you guys let us conclude our session for the day